In section one of our sweater, we worked the right front. In section two, we worked the right back. And in section three, we're going to connect the back and the front and work the right side, which is this pink one here that starts at the kind of the hemline side of the back, goes across all those um, back stitches that we worked in section two, and it meets here at the top of the shoulders, the front stitches that we worked in section one and continues across all of those stitches to the hemline here in front. So we're going to work all across the back and the front in this section now. For that, we need to cast on a few stitches here where the back and the front meet for um, our neckline to finish off our neckline. And then we're going to work decreases here at the top of the shoulders to give our sweater a bit of a slant here, a shoulder slant. So it's a bit of a nicer fit. So that's what we're going to do um, in section three, the right side. I'm going to start where my section two, the right back in it, and I'm just going to work across um, across this whole row until I reach my last stitch. And that is where things get a little different. So just follow the pattern or as establish and work across the row. Before I work my last stitch of the row, I'm going to place a stitch marker. Um, this marks kind of the end of my back section here. And then I'm going to purl my last stitch here because it's now not going to be an edge stitch anymore. It's now going to be um, the middle of my row, the top of my shoulder. And then I turn around, I turn the work so the, um, the wrong side of the back piece is facing me. And I'm going to cable cast on stitches here um, that will be um, at the center of the row. And these will finish kind of the, um, the neckline. And the number of stitches you need to cast on is different for um, each neckline option. So please have a look at the pattern. For the cable cast on, I insert my right hand needle between two stitches. So in this case, between the last stitch here of the row and the stitch marker. And I pull a stitch through and then I place the stitch on my left hand needle. Insert through two stitches, pull a loop through and place it on your needles. So for English style knitting, it looks like this. Insert through two stitches and pull through and place on the needle. Insert through two stitches, between two stitches. You kind of make a yarn over and pull that through and place it on the needles. I don't need four stitches. I only need two of them for my tiny little sample. So after I've cable cast on the right number of stitches, I turn back around so the right side is facing me again. And this is where the stitches from the front section um, come into play again. So they're still parked on the cable of my circular needles. So I'm going to slide them now back towards the needle tip here, towards my left hand needle. After my section one stitches, the right front stitches are back on my left hand needle. I continue working them. So I have placed this marker here. I've placed the marker. I've cast on my stitches for the top of the shoulder. And then I simply work across the front stitches kind of as established. Um, you want to be a bit careful here because we had those left pearl crosses here, but now on the on this part we still have the right pearl crosses. So you have to kind of make sure you don't mix those up. 
so I work with um, right pearl crosses and pearls until I reach the end of the row. And this is how I have both the right back and the right front um, connected here in the middle with our cast on stitches. You can see um, this part here where um, those edges don't quite meet. That's half of the neckline. Uh, when I turn around and work um, set up row two on the wrong side, I'm going I work across these stitches as established until I reach two stitches before the stitch marker. Marker and then I'm knitting those two together. Then I slip the marker and work as established to the end of the wrong side row. So both my front and back pieces are now connected here in the middle where I have those the cast on stitches um, and I have the stitch marker placed just before my center stitch. Um, so that's the middle stitch of the row and this is also the center stitch of the um, that's kind of a, on the top of the shoulder and this is where I'm going to work decreases for um, for a slanted shoulder line um, that's just to make the fit a little more flattering so every six rows we're going to decrease um, two stitches here in the middle and for that we also kind of have to um, replace the shoulder marker every so often um, because now it's just before this middle stitch um, and if we work a decrease we have to kind of move it over to the right every so often but I'm going to show you how to work those decreases in just a moment. If you're like me and you missed, um, missed those stitches, because you can see here I purled my slipped st stitches that I should have been slipped, like here. If you ever want to fix one of those mistakes where you purled um, a stitch that should have been slipped, you can work to... Um, to that stitch. In this case, um, these two would be my one by one right pearl cross. So I'm not working this pearl stitch, but I'm just slipping it. And then I'm going to insert my needle through the stitch below this one here and drop it off the needle. Kind of wiggle it through so it unravels. And then have the float in the back of the work and place it back onto my left hand needle. It has a longer float than it would usually have if you would have slipped it, but every so often you can repair it like that. So I'm going to now work this as my one by one right pearl cross. And because I made the same exact mistake on this one here, I'm going to show it again. I'm not going to work it simply because that's not going to be necessary. I'm going to insert my right hand needle through the stitch one row below, pull this thread through so it unravels that one row and place the stitch back onto my left hand needle. And this slip stitch as well and then I'm going to work those. So you'll see that this one here is, um, the stitch here is now looser because it has a bit of more extra float. But in like the grand scheme of the sweater, um, this is not too big of a problem. Just shouldn't do it like every time or every row. But every once in a while you can easily repair it like that. When you reach a row where just before the marker you can work just one um, more pearl cross and then you slip the marker that is your indication that your next right side row is going to be one where you work a decrease here in the center because there is no more stitches left to cross um, to the left here um, 
because there's the marker that marks the top of the row. So in the next right side row, we're going to work a decrease here in the middle of the row. And for that, we're going to move um, the stitch marker in the following wrong side row. So when you have just those, the, the kind of knit rib, one purl stitch left here just after the marker and another one of those traveling knit stitches. Um, after you've that worked that, you kind of want to keep in mind that in the next wrong side row, that you want to move the marker so you can work the, in the decrease at the center of the row in the next right side row. On the wrong side, I have just worked until I, I've reached the marker. And then I'm going to remove the marker. I'm going to slip the next stitch um, pearlwise with the yarn in front, um, kind of in pattern, I'm staying in pattern. And then I'm replacing the marker again. So the marker has been moved one stitch um, towards the left here, which is towards the end of the wrong side row. And then I can just continue working in pattern um, until I reach the mark again on my next right side row. So I'm back on my right side and I have worked in pattern as established until I reach the marker. And this is my decrease row now. So I slip the marker and I'm going to work a decrease um, a two stitch decrease over those three stitches. And what you can see is that um, the first of those three stitches is one of those traveling stitches that comes from the back. The middle stitch is a purl stitch and the third of them is a traveling stitch that comes from the front. So they're going to meet right here at the top of the shoulder and we're going to decrease two stitches here. And for that, I'm going to work a SK2P decrease. Um, SK2P stands for slip a stitch, knit two stitches together, and pass the slipped stitch over. And see how beautifully those two traveling stitches meet here in the middle. If you're an English style knitter, the SK2P decrease looks like this. SK2P stands for slip one stitch, knit twice, knit two stitches together, and pass the slipped stitch over. And that is a beautiful decrease right here in the middle of our row at the top of the shoulder that finishes off our um, chevron kind of pattern here at the top. Um, in the following wrong side row, you will knit this stitch, which creates a pearl bump here on the right side and really nicely, neatly finishes um, these lines here, the pattern, the chevron pattern. So as I said, these um, decreases at the center of the row for the um, shoulder slant. Um, are worked every six rows and um, when they are worked with those slipped stitches, traveling stitches, you're working the SK2P decrease and when you are kind of here in the longer pearl stitch part here or if you're stocking at stitch part, you'd not work um, this decrease but you'd work two separate um, pearl two together decreases um, instead. How many rows you need to work in this section, section three, the right side, depends on the circumference of your sweater. So um, size one would have fewer rows, size eight has the most rows, um, because the number of rows um, correspond to the circumference of the sweater. So please have a look at the pattern and it's going to tell you when you're finished. When you are finished with section three, it will look a little like this. You'll have um, the center, uh, the stitch marker still in the center here. Um, and you'll have this, all the stitches on your needles. 
and there is going to be a bit of a ditch here in the middle of the row and that is a the half of your neckline so that's the back is the one is the part that is a little more straight um, can't really see it here as well because um, it rolls a bit here so this part is straighter and this one is more curved or more slanted and that is the front and in the next section we're going to um, close the side seam of our sweater and finish the right side of the sweater. <laughs> 